Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'd like to discuss with you the really, really interesting aspects of the fetal heart. Yeah, the fetal heart is, um, you know, on the uh, appearance from the outside, is very similar to like a newborn baby or even uh, an adult heart. But inside, there's some key differences. And I think um, uh, it's certainly fascinating. And the question is, as we start this video, the question is, why would they have differences? And so, and I think, um, you know, what, what I would say about the differences is that there really bypasses away from the fetal lungs. And so that's the key difference. And so the come away message from this discussion is that these are bypasses that the heart has implemented to make sure that not all of the blood is going to the lungs. Because the thing is, the fetus is in, inside the mother's uterus and more specifically inside the amniotic sac. And so the lungs are filled with amniotic fluid and so there's not a lot of oxygen. So only about 10% of the fetal circulation is going to the lungs and, and the rest of it, 90%, is, is being bypassed away from the lungs. And so how is that accomplished is the discussion of this video. And how it's accomplished is by these two very interesting structures. One of them is basically a hole that is between the right atrium and the left atrium. It's called the foramen ovale. And the other one is a, an interesting connection called the ductus arteriosus. It's a connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta. But before we get into the detail of that, uh, I just wanted to point out just a few things in this diagram. When you, you, know, you look at this uh, to get some orientation here, See this blue blood right in here? This blue blood is coming from the head of the, fe of the fetus, and it's blue because it's mainly deoxygenated. This is, of course, the superior vena cava, and it's dumping into the right atrium. So this is the right atrium right here. Now, do you notice over here, uh, there's sort of like this reddish uh, blood coming in? This is not exactly anatomically the location, but this is the ductus venosus. So this is the rich oxygenated blood that's coming from the umbilical vein into the baby. So this is coming ultimately from the placenta. This is coming into the inferior vena cava. And basically we're going in from this sort of pink to this purple because this is deoxygenated blood coming from the fetal body. So we have this sort of pinkish blood in the right atrium. And then overall it's kind of purplish. Now this is, I have to point this out, this is different than in the adult heart because you know normally if you're familiar with this the right side of the heart is is deoxygenated blood and the left is oxygenated blood so here you have this sort of pinkish sort of not as oxygenated blood uh, in the fetal heart and so let me refresh you of what i was talking about a little bit uh, more this is the umbilical vein coming in with this oxygenated blood here's the portal vein now the ductus arteriosus is this really cool link uh, bringing oxygenated blood into the inferior vena cava. So that's why the, there's sort of that pinkish blood in the right atrium, where normally it's just blue blood. So you got this red kind of purplish oxygenated blood in the right atrium of the fetus, and that's a difference. And so let me again back it away just for a moment. So this oxygenated blood coming in through the umbilical cord into the fetal body is in the umbilical vein. This comes up here by the liver called the ductus venosus and that's emptying into the inferior vena cava. And so this is where we are in the right atrium. And so you get this kind of purplish blood right here. And the goal is to get this blood to the rest of the body and not spend so much time going into the lungs. That's the goal of this. And so again, here, let's just sort of label some things here. This is the, uh, the right atrium, of course. This is the, the right ventricle. This is the left atrium. This is the left ventricle. Now, what you see here are some valves. These are the AV valves. This is sometimes known as the tricuspid. This is the bicuspid valve, if you're familiar with that. Uh, clinically more known as the mitral valve located over here. So what's happening is this oxygenated blood is coming up in into the right atrium. And so, you know, okay, so what are you going to do? Normally what happens is this blood is deoxygenated and it goes down into the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery 
now artery is away from the heart and it's normally deoxygenated. So normally the, the um, pulmonary artery is taking the blood to the lungs. And so we want to bypass that a little bit. And I also wanted to feature this one particular area anatomically is this atrial septum. And that's where that the hole's going to be because this is this sort of, if you will, oxygenated blood. And what you want to do is not send it all into, into the lungs, um, but rather you want to get it over here into the left atrium. And then ultimately it's going to go to the left ventricle and then out the aorta. So you want oxygenated blood to, uh, to go as quickly as you can to the aorta. And so one of the ways in which this is accomplished, I mentioned there's a, there's a hole right here uh, separating uh, or, or allowing blood to pass from the right atrium to the left atrium. But there's some cool factors what really causes the perfusion of the blood through that hole. And it has to do with pressure. It's not that the blood knows what it, where it's supposed to go here, because sometimes the blood is either going to go through the hole or it's either going to go down here. But it's going to prefer going through the, the foramen uh, ovale because of pressure. And so let's just back this up a little bit and talk, talk a little bit about what's happening pressure-wise. And so if you think about it, when the blood is coming right here, uh, okay, let's go blue here. So when this blood is traveling like this in the pulmonary arteries, uh, where, where the pulmonary arteries are leading is, of course, the lung. And so this is the right lung. And then over here would be, of course, the left lung. And the left lung is kind of interesting because it has like this little notch right here where the apex of the heart is orientated. Okay, and so what's happening now? I won't go into the detail of the lung, but th th this is of of relevantly impo important material. So, what we have here are pulmonary arteries coming away from the heart, and these branch down into smaller and smaller arterioles. If you're familiar with the internal structure of the lung, and so ultimately, this is where gas exchange normally occurs. And so, you know, your trachea not drawn, your trachea is coming down, and then your your right and left bronchi are entering in. So you have air passageways into, into the bronchial tree. And so let me just show that just for a second. So the trachea is coming down like this. And so you're branching in. And so you have these air passages coming down and they branch further and further and further and further, ultimately until they terminate in, into these air sacs called alveoli, okay? And these alveoli normally contain oxygen, but in the fetus, obviously there's not going to be air inside the lungs. This is filled with fluid. And so what I'm getting at here is that the, the level of oxygen is actually rather low inside the alveolar air sacs, okay? Because it's filled with fluid. And as a consequence of that, as a consequence of that, what happens is the air sacs communicate through this a message that allows the pulmonary artery, okay, so let's talk about that just for a second. The pulmonary artery, as you might be aware of, uh, branches into an arterial. And then the arterial forms into a capillary, which is ra rather narrow, okay? Because that's the site of diffusion, simple squamous. But what's interesting is the, um, let me go yellow here, uh, an arterial vessel is lined with smooth muscle. And muscle, as you may be aware of, is capable of constriction. That's what muscle does. It, it's, it can, can, can uh, contract. And so as it turns out, in low oxygen environment, that causes these muscle cells, smooth muscle cells, to con constrict. And so let me redraw that. And so if this is re it constricting, What's happening is that these vessels inside the lung, inside the lung, and so what we're talking about here, let me name this, is called hypoxic, which means low oxygen, so that's low oxygen, hypoxic. Pulmonary, which refers to the lung, vasoconstriction. So these blood vessels are becoming constricted, and as a result of their constriction, the 
the resistance inside the vessel goes up because it's a smaller vessel. So resistance goes up and therefore pressure is directly proportional to that. So pressure goes up. And you're like, well, no big deal. Well, there again, the alveolar air sacs, you know, approximately 200 million of these per lung. So this is rather a lot of pressure buildup. And so what I'm saying is resistance is building in the pulmonary arteries. So let me back it all up. So resistance is building and pressure is building, pressure. So there's a lot of pressure here. And so that ultimately backs up to uh, a lot of pressure in the right ventricle. And that ultimately backs up into a lot of pressure in the right atrium. So you got a so high pressure right here. And so the high pressure is going to sort of be the reason that blood is going to want to pass through this hole that goes from the right atrium to the right uh, to the left atrium, because it just it's the path of least resistance, if you will. And so there's a there's a perfusion, a flow of blood from the right atrium to the to the left atrium because of the fact that the blood really just doesn't want to go into the lungs and it's kind of backing it all up. Okay, so. This foramen ovale is part is, is the highlight of our our conversation. It's the first bypass in, in the fetal heart. And so it conveys a large part of the blood entering the right atrium and it goes right across into the into the left atrium and it passes through this uh, atrial septum right in here. And you're like, well, how is it that there is a hole? I mean, anatomically, what 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 is up with that? What what hole are, are we talking about? So Let's take a look closely, if you will, at the uh, atrial septum. And so, as it turns out, let me attempt to draw this. So, what you have here are basically two walls that make this atrium possible. One of them is called the septum uh, primum. It's this one right here, septum primum. Okay, and this is the se septum secundum. Okay, so secundum. And so over here, just to make sure that we're all okay, this is the right atrium over here, and this is the left atrium. So we're gonna try to create a hole. And so physically, there is a hole. So there's a hole in this wall, okay, like that. And so you're like, wow, there's a, there's a hole or a little passage like this in the septum secundum. So if you're actually in here looking you would actually look through this little hole and you'd actually be looking at the wall of the septum primum. And as it turns out, the septum primum uh, also has a hole in it like this. Let me see if I can do that. It goes like that. And as it turns out, we have this kind of situation occurring. And so this oxygenated blood right in here, which is under high pressure. Do you remember we were just talking about? So high pressure and the blood's going to be like, where do I want to go? I'm going to, I want to go through the foramen ovale. So it's, it's pushing really hard through that hole. And as a result of it, check this out, it's causing the septum primum because this is like going to be like a flap. It's going to cause this thing right here to flap open. I hope I'm able to illustrate that, whoops, like this. It's able to like flap open like this. And so basically the flap is the septum primum, allowing the blood flow from the oxygenated blood flow, which is high right here in the right atrium. It's gonna go through the foramen ovale and into the left atrium, which is gonna then bypass going to the right ventricle. So less blood would ultimately go to the lungs as a result of that. But it's influenced by the pressure, and that's why it's it's pushing through that through that flap. And so that's what we're talking about. So I find this picture pr pretty awesome. So this is literally inside the right atrium. So this is what blood would be looking at. That hole is, this tissue right here is, is the primum uh, secundum. And that hole is the foramen ovale. And what you're looking at is this tissue right here is the septum primum. So when the blood pushes on that tissue, it's literally gonna open it up. So that's the flap. 
And so that, isn't that awesome? So the blood then bypasses the right ventricle and goes into the left atrium. And so there it is. The foramen ovale, the blood cruises from here across into the left atrium. And again, you're like, uh, I lost track of why this was important. It's because you don't really want the blood to be going into the right ventricle as much and then going into the lungs because the lungs aren't going to be uh, picking up oxygen. Okay, And so again, it's this foramen ovale which is allowing the blood to move from the, from the right atrium to the left atrium. And then here it is, the picture. You can see the two walls of the septum right there. And so this is the uh, secundum primum right there in green. And so there it is. So uh, this actually moves over. And so, you know, the thing is, uh, this video won't be discussing it, but sometimes uh, children are born and the, and the, the foramen ovale obviously closes, um, but sometimes it doesn't. And so it's, it's called patient foramen ovale. And so um, this has to be uh, handled medically in order to, uh, to solve that problem. And so uh, here you have it, the foramen ovale is coming across right in here, so delivering oxygenated blood over into the uh, left atrium. And then ultimately, the left atrium is going through the mitral valve into the left ventricle, and then that's pumping blood in the aorta to the rest of the body so the baby can get nice oxygenated blood. Okay, And so the second sort of bypass or, or little interesting trick that the, that the fetus has uh, is called ductus arteriosus. Now that's not to be confused with ductus venosus, which is over here. The ductus arteriosus is a connection right here that, and I'll just draw it in, it's a connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta because again, some most of this blood is being bypassed through the foramen ovale, but the truth is some blood is still going into the into the right ventricle, and that's all together. That's not a bad thing because, you know, the right ventricle has to pump, and it does need to pump blood to the lungs. Uh, the lungs do need a little bit of blood to, uh, to oxygenate, to grow. And you want these, this muscle down here to, to strengthen, and that's, and that's very important. But check this out. Uh, what you want to do is if some blood goes into the, the right ventricle, it's going to get pumped through the pulmonary arteries. And again, you want you don't want all that blood going into these pulmonary arteries going into the right and left lung. So this structure right here, ductus arteriosus, will allow this oxygenated blood to bypass the lungs and go right into the aorta. So what I'm saying in general is the fetal heart has two ways in which it tries to get its oxygenated blood to the aorta. One is the foramen ovale, and we come over here, and then it goes up into the aorta. The other one is the ductus arteriosus is trying to get blood into the aorta in order to bypass the lungs. And so the, this is a cool diagram here. This is the, the ductus arteriosus here. Let me draw a line right to it. So it's right there. So normally this, um, this blood is coming up, and it would normally go into the lungs, but most of it is going into the ductus arteriosus. And I know what you might be thinking here. You're like, well, why would it choose the ductus arteriosus? Is it because we're talking about it? No, it's because the pressure is really high in the lungs. And so again, it's like, oh, where am I gonna go? I'm gonna go up here. And so that's where most of the blood's gonna be bypassed through the ductus arteriosus. Now that's not to be confused with the ductus venosus, which is again, here's the umbilical vein coming in with this oxygenated blood underneath the liver. Here's the gallbladder. Here's the portal vein. Do you notice here this ductus arteriosus, I mean venosus, is right here, which is bringing the, this rich oxygenated blood and mixing into the inferior vena cava, which is then causing this good oxygenated sort of pinkish blood in the right atrium there. Okay, so there's two things that we have discussed. There's this sort of um, hole uh, called the foramen ovale, which allows the oxygenated blood to flow from the, the right atrium to the left. And then lastly, we talked about the ductus arteriosus, which is a vessel connecting the pulmonary artery and the arterial, which is both bypassing the lungs. And so uh, the final thing that I want to talk about is, you know, we're talking about the fetal heart, and most times people, you know, if you're pregnant or if you know someone who's pregnant and you're 
and you're like, oh, fetal heart. Um, usually you're not talking about bypassing the lungs or your foramen ovale or ductus arteriosus. Usually you're talking about, uh, I'd like to hear my baby's heart. <laughs> and so just back it down just for a little bit uh, in terms of intensity. I just want to point out that by the ninth week of pregnancy, the, the normal heart rate uh, for the fetus is, is really high. It's like 175 beats per minute. And so uh, it's, it's, it's really, really, really rapid. And, and um, the, the heart is somewhat beating independently. It's not in total control of the, the fetal brain yet. So it's kind of interesting at this point. But then it starts to slow down a little. It starts to slow down. It's still much higher than, uh, than our adult heart or a newborn, but it does begin to slow down. So it's about 150 during the, the middle of pregnancy. And you're like, well, how, how does one know this? Well, there's fetal heart monitors that can be attached to the outside here. And there's these transducers that will uh, be able to, to uh, pick up. This is showing that this particular one is able to pick up uterine contractions during labor. And then this particular um, sensor over on this side is listening specifically for the fetal heart. And that's important in terms of determining if there's some kind of stressful event going on during labor. Like for example, when the baby's coming out, maybe there's, a, there's compression of the umbilical cord, which is gonna put the, the, the fetus in major stress and that's gonna you know, cut off the oxygen. That's very serious. Uh, and so that, that could be detected um, remotely by the fact that the heart rate would start increasing and so that would be a sign and so uh, there's all kinds of fetal heart monitors that can be attached to the outside of the body uh, here's this doppler one that you can just simply place on the outside of, of the body and listen to it uh, and so you could strap these on right here so that they don't fall off during during labor and then uh, there's also another one i just want to point out a couple of varieties here there's an internal fetal heart monitor where you'd stick in this this uh intrauterine catheter in here and it's like it has so this is into the birth canal uh, literally through the opening of the cervix here and it has like and it sounds bad but it has like this little fish like hook that like hooks into the baby's um, skull <laughs> it won't hurt the fetus but it's able to um, listen to the uh, the heart um, uh, during during labor so that that's kind of a cool thing and so I also wanted to show you here if I if I may uh, just practically speaking uh, of what one of these these fetal dopplers uh, are all about and you can sort of uh, you know put a little of the jelly onto onto the tummy right here in order to make sure that the sound waves are traveling uh, properly through and I'll let you listen to this this is pretty interesting So there's a, there's a variety of models that you can buy uh, or you can rent from the hospital or this procedure might be done while you're actually going in for a checkup. But once you, once you dial it in, it's quite magnificent. I mean, it'll really bring tears to your eyes listening to, your, to the fetal heart. Pretty cool. <laughs> So this is what we've been talking about. We've been talking about the fetal heart, and uh, it's quite remarkable. It's amazing how we know all this, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, a minor miracle. So I hope you enjoyed this discussion of uh, the fetal heart, and in particular a discussion of how the fetal heart bypasses uh, using the foramen ovale and the ductus uh, arteriosus. Thanks for watching.